Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the GC, I'm sorry, this is the Case Knives uh, 1993 Five Blade Stag Sowbelly Stockman. A uh, little bit of a mouthful, but there, 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 there you go. Um, This is made by uh, Case Knives, actually. It's the very first knife I've had on my channel from Case, and uh, very interesting. But actually, uh, I want to thank first my Patreon patrons for uh, putting this guy on my table. Every so often, I will do a patrons pick for the Nick, where basically, I will give my Patreon patrons... Uh, a chance anyone can suggest an idea, and then whatever one uh, is most interesting to the you know majority of patrons is the one I'll do. And the thing that won this time was a knife with like four different blades. Um, and indeed. Oh, yeah, that's right. Five blades. I, I went one above and beyond for my patrons. So here I am. But actually, in some ways, you know, it's very much out of character for my channel. Um, but at the same time, it was interesting to check out A, a new brand, and B, also to see sort of, you know, this is a very, very unusual thing. Is it actually, does it make sense? So thanks for that, patrons. Next thing, let's do a little size comparison right quick. This is the biggest of the blades right here, and we can see that, um, put it up next to the Spydeco Delica. In terms of sharp and blade length, it's actually pretty similar. Um, although the, 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 blade itself, I'm sorry, the handle itself is a little thinner, um, it's a little thicker, that is, uh, by a pretty substantial margin, so there's that. Here it is against the Ontario Rat number one, Rat number two, two much more modern knives, um, but you can see, again, size-wise, it's in the intermediate range, and then let's compare it to my two token traditionals. Um, there's this little guy right here, this is a Great Eastern Cutlery 99 pattern, and this is a Northfield unexcelled, um, the 43 pattern GEC, both by Great Eastern Cutlery, this one's on the table for review, this one is in my permanent collection. But anyways, so there you go, um, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this little guy right here. So on the good side, um, first off, overall, the exterior finishing on it is pretty solid. Um, what you can see here is that there is a fair amount of polish to this, and especially if I kind of get my fingerprints off of it, yeah, this is reasonably nicely polished. Um, you can see absolutely 100% your own reflection. You can see a whole bunch of stuff in there, and honestly, it's nice. Um, it's reasonably well done. Um, that's good, and I also have to say that the uh, materials on this guy are pretty well done, too. You've got yourself a, a little bit of stag here. You've got yourself a little bit of uh, brass and steel. You've got yourself the uh, oval shield, complete with the case logo, and the case logo is kind of interestingly done. There's a nice matte background around it. I mean, overall, it's not unattractive. And in fact, this main blade has some printing on it. Hold on just a second. I'll get that back out there for you. Come on. Ah, there we go. All right. Uh, the, the, the main blade here has some printing to it. There we go. Case, Bradford, PA. There you go. Um, and that printing is not unattractive. Again, it's it, it's kind of cool. So um, I, I got to say, I got to give him credit for uh, making it both a nice exterior looking finishing knife as well as uh, relatively unattractive. Um, Next thing, the traditional, the fact this is a traditional knife and it is a very traditional traditional with the stag and everything makes this actually a lot less scary to people. Um, as funny as it is, um, people are very differently scared by a cutting tool uh, if it looks like this as opposed to if it looks like this. Um, for some reason, this is a lot more, oh my god, weapon to a lot of people than this guy ever will be. And so, as a result, this knife is a lot more lunchroom safe, and particularly if you open up one of the smaller blades, ah, there we go, one of the smaller blades on there, it's, you know, people are going to be hard-pressed to get too terrified by this. Some people will manage. Fear is a lifestyle, certainly, but at the same time, it is, uh, yeah, that's got that going for it. Next thing, the uh, largest knife. Oh, damn it, I closed it. Hold on. Uh, the largest knife on this guy... Ah, here we go, is, uh, actually has this flat area right down here. So you can see here, the little flat area, and when you put your index finger right there, that makes this guy actually very, very difficult to close accidentally on you. Um, even though this is completely a, uh, slip joint style knife, there we go, um, this is absolutely 100% reasonably safe. Absolutely 100% reasonably. Wow. Which one is it? Um, this is a reasonably safe knife. Uh, even though it's non-locking, uh, th this isn't really going anywhere, and particularly with this smooth area here, not going to close. So that's good. Then finally, on the good side, um, e every one of these blades is reasonably thin. The stock thickness that Case is using here is is quite, quite reasonable. Uh, let me pull out my uh, caliper. Let me find my caliper. I don't know where my caliper is. I'm sure it's in the other room or something. Either way, um, I'm sure that's stuff that you can look right up. But the simple fact of the matter is that relative to a lot of other knives, this is reasonably thin, and it's also ground very thin. I mean, if we take a look here at the edge behind the sharpening choil, very, very thin. And so as a result, um, if you sharpen this guy up, it will outcut 90% of your modern pocket knives out there. So many of your modern tactical folders are very thick behind the edge for durability, um, but they've lost track of the fact that these really thin blades 
blade stocks with thin blade grinds can cut just beautifully. And so to me, that's what's good here is that it's very thin blades with very thin grinds uh, behind the edge there. Um, it is uh, each and every one of the blades. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it is not unattractive whatsoever. Uh, traditionals are a little less scary to people. Um, the lodge knife has a smooth area down there for safety. The exterior finishing is absolutely good. So that's the good. On the great side, um, hey, oh, dog, I heard you like knives, so I put knives in your knives. Um, look, there is not just one blade in this, not just two, not three, not four, but five different freaking knife blades in this guy. I'll try and pop them all open so you can kind of see here. And I'm using this guy. There we go. Those two. No, that one needs a tool, too. Okay, hold on. Ah, here we go, and I will pop, oh, damn it, now I got these two open. I will get there, and I'm going to try real hard not to cut myself as I do it. There we go, this one's easier. That's good. Now I'll just get this guy open. There we go, okay, five different freaking knife blades, each one of them covered in gunk from actually trying to use them. Because as I was carrying this guy, I made a conscious effort to try and use all of the blades as best I could. You know, if I, uh, you know, because I gave this guy a little bit more carry than usual because I had a lot more blades than usual to test. But anyways, um, this has five different blades of a bunch of different varieties. You've got yourself a Warncliffe style blade, something a lot more sheep's footy here. You've got yourself two clip points in a large and a small variety. And then you've got yourself a more conventional sort of uh, drop pointy guy, I guess nice flat, you know, and the nice part about this is that you've got pretty much every blade shape you need. You know, if you need a strong piercing tip, you've got this guy. If you need yourself, you know, those kind of utility dragging cuts, you got a warning here, you got sheep's foot for some circumstances, particularly like scraping in the concave areas. I mean, th 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 there is some level to which it's nice to have this kind of a variety of blade shape. Um, and honestly, having multiple blades that it can allow you to do some fun things in there, for instance, you know, it, for instance, if you sharpen these up after you got it from the factory, um, one of the blades is almost certainly sharp. There is no way that you're doing enough work during the course of one day to dull every one of these blades, even though they're all, you know, a carbon, you know, steel, not like, oh my God, incredible. But, you know, no, these are going to stay sharp uh, because you're not going to use all of them that much because there were a bunch to spread around. And you've also got, you know, one for food, one for something, you know, either way. Um, I think what's great, or at least what's interesting about this guy is the fact that you have this many damn blades in this knife, and that is certainly impressive. So, I um, to me, that's going to be what's great is that they put five different freaking blades in this thing. Um, on the bad side, um, one thing you'll notice immediately is that the construction on this guy is entirely pinned. There are no screws, and this knife cannot be disassembled. It's not the case that you can take this apart and, for instance, tighten up the pivot or anything like that. Um, that's a little frustrating at some level because, well, the pivot needs tightening. But at the same time, you know, that, that's a traditional knife. That's sort of a, the, 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 that's how it works in traditional. So, you know, whatever. Um, next thing, this guy is pretty heavy. Um, it's not the end of any particular worlds, but uh, you've got a whole bunch of blade here and a whole bunch of liners and whatnot. You're coming in at like 4.09 ounces here for a uh, relatively small knife. Um, it's fine. I just kind of tossed it in the coin pocket of my pants, but, uh, you know, it does what it needs to do. Uh, it's just heavy as it's doing it. Um, next thing, the action on these guys is very inconsistent. Some of these knives are very easy to get to. The one cliff knife, for instance, has a relatively light pull which is nice, and actually the action on this is probably better than the rest, and this has ended up being the one I used more often as I was carrying this guy. Partly because you can see the nail nick, which I generally don't like anyways, but the nail nick is very exposed, making it easy to get in there and get a good angle on it. It's also got this little area down here for safety so it won't shut on your finger. Um, you know, this is probably the best of the blades. Other ones of them, not quite so good. This one, unfortunately, has a much grittier action than the rest. The, uh... Ah, that guy is a royal pain in the neck to get out of there. Um, although, again, it does have the uh, little safety area down here. And uh, there we go. Yeah, this one's pretty easy, but it's got a really strong... The, ba basically, I could show... I could just pull these off, you know, pull these out all day long. But the, the simple fact is that each one of these guys has a very different walk and talk to it. Um, some have su substantially less detent, sub substantially less backspring. Some feel like they actually have a half stop. Some of them do not. Um, unfortunately, getting to the main one is a royal pain in the neck, um, it, which, you know, yeah. And lubrication, unfortunately, did not help. My hope was that, you know, okay, once I carry it a little bit, I lubricate 
things a little bit, it'll get a little bit better. And maybe it would after 20 years or something, but unfortunately, for me at least, each one of these is inconsistently uh, actioned, if you will, and uh, none of them are really great. Actually, that's not true. The Warney is pretty solid action-wise. Um, so that's that's not great, the inconsistency in action. Um, speaking of the middle blade there, good luck opening it. You've been seeing me use this little tool here. This is actually a watch spring bar tool. Um, not the best tool for the job, but the one that's at hand. But unfortunately, I don't keep my nails very long. And even if I did keep my nails very long, I'm not Sabretooth from the X-Men, so I've got adamantium fingernails to get in there. So unfortunately, it's a real pain in my neck to get up in there and remove, pull this blade out. Partly because if we look at it, the nail neck for this guy is recessed underneath the, the blade for the other one. And so practically speaking, what you need to do is pull this guy out if you want to try and do it with your finger, and then get in there, but the problem is then you're pulling this guy down towards this blade, and so you kind of end up at a certain point swapping the blades around. No, just freaking no, I'm sorry. That, that It's not a good arrangement, and uh, it, it really, coupled with the strong detent on there and the gritty action, that was really a pain in the neck. I ended up using this middle blade less than any of the other ones because it was the one that was hardest to get to without a secondary tool. And then finally, on the bad side, this knife here is uh, 235 bucks, which is one of those numbers that I never would have paid had my Patreon patrons not been so damn generous and not requested this guy. They're very kind and generous to me, so, you know, I absolutely am going to do that. Um, But holy crap, is that a lot of money? I mean, I, okay, I'll certainly give you that if you count number of blades, um, you know, the Delica is, what, 80 bucks and has only one blade? This has five? For less than five times that? That's that's good, but no. Um, Honestly, I don't, this is is not a, a value remotely. This is a price that I only put up with because I was being asked to by very generous human beings. And so, no, 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 no freaking nope for that. Um, price is just no. Um, and so that's the bad to me, is that it is really expensive. Good luck opening the middle blade. Each one of the blades has a very inconsistent action. It is four ounces, which is pretty heavy, and it's pin construction. On the ugly front, unfortunately, there is some serious ugly here. To start with, every one of these five blades has substantial side-to-side -side blade play. You can probably even see it wiggling around in there. And look, I know that to an extent that is part of for the course in a traditional knife, but the thing is, in some of my other traditionals, particularly those from Great Eastern Cutlery, this one has practically no blade play at all. Um, and yet, this one has just extreme blade play. Um, really, really freaking ugly. This one, I can actually feel the blade sliding back and forth along the thing. Um, and even compared to, like, Buck, this guy has less blade play than this. Uh, it's just freaking ugly. Um, and so, that's really not great, and it is present on all five of these blades, which just is five times the unacceptable. The other ugly issue with this guy is that this came out of the box not sharp. Now, it would have cut things, partly because the edges are very, very thin, so, you know, even a dull, thin edge is going to be better than a, a sharp, really stupid axe edge for a lot of their, their, you know, everyday cutting tasks, but what they actually had there were a bunch of burrs. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, and this is just my, my best guess here, do I really not have a freaking pen around here? Is that, uh, there we go, as, you were, as they were sharpening this guy, what they ended up with was something like this, like wire edge, a burr, on every one of these things, and so, unfortunately, uh, as you kind of, if you drag your finger along the edge up in this direction on it, you could feel smoothness on one side, and then your finger would catch coming up the other side. That just means that it wasn't well sharpened, that whoever put it at the factory just kind of put it against the wheel and then felt like, oh yeah, that's kind of grabbing, that must be sharp. No, that's a wire edge or a burr or something like that. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't knock off that easily either. So in order to carry this guy at all, I had to individually sharpen each one of these blades, and that wasn't a great experience. That's kind of your job case. I get that factory edges are generally not incredible, but this is way, 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 way behind the curve. This is probably the worst set of factory edges I've had out of a box. Um, and so that was just not acceptable. Um, this is, if, if somebody didn't have sharpening skills, this knife, and especially the problem is, if you've got something like this, and the wire edge kind of breaks off, eventually it could break off at a weird angle, and you'd end up with something that is substantially dull. And that's just not good. And so ultimately, that sharpening is just not okay, and they really should be doing better, especially for 235 bucks. I get it, there are five knives, but 
so what? Take your freaking time. So um, to me, that's what's ugly here, is that the sharpening was just awfully done here, and there was substantial blade play on every one of those blades. So look, um, final conclusions, this is a passable cutting tool. I mean, it is actually five passable cutting tools. You can open it, it will cut things. And, you know, frankly, they've got some nice affordances here, and it's not unattractive and things like that. But the problem with this knife is that it is all talk and no walk. It is a knife that looks great 100% of the time. It, it, it is beautiful on a shelf. I, if especially if you pop all those out there, you could set this up on your little glass shelf with all your other knives and just be like, wow, that's attractive. Wow, I love the beauty and grace of a traditional knife. But the problem is then I had to carry it. And then I realized that, no, this this isn't doing that. Um, Because the action is really disappointing and it's to the point where it gets a little bit frustrating because you're like trying to guide this out of here and it's so inconsistent that you're like, okay, should I keep applying force? A couple of times I I've almost cut myself on this guy just trying to guide these blades out because there's a lot of back and forth, you know, like catches and such. Um, you realize that the blades on this guy are, well, at least certainly two of the five are a royal pain in the neck to get out of there, especially the big one, which is the one you might use most often. You're going to realize that every one of the blades has play and that's ugly and that the knife came out of the box with a bunch of burrs rather than edges. And then you remember that you could have bought, you know, a bunch of great modern knives for the price of one of these guys. And then you realize that, oh no. I mean, perhaps with enough use, the, the, the blades, the action that is, would be able to break in. Um, they, they, you know, it round off some of those corners and maybe some of the grit would come out of there from the factory and it would start to get smoother. And if I spent the full evening sharpening each blade again, or more specifically giving it, you know, a really keen edge, because I, you know, I wasn't spending, oh my God, like I didn't get out the freaking KME for every one of these. No, 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 no. Um, but ultimately, and maybe, heck, this is just a QC fail. Maybe that's what's going on here. Maybe this is the worst knife case has ever shipped. But I'm reminded ultimately of a saying in the, in the knife community that I've heard a couple of times that I've always felt true every time I handle their work, which is that cases for people, case knives, that is, for people who like collecting a lot more than they like knives. And unfortunately, that's kind of my experience here. This right here is a great collector's piece. This is a knife that is absolutely gorgeous on the shelf, but it's something that belongs there to, to, to look at and to smile. It is an ode tra to traditional knife making. It is an ode to case knife making, and I'm sure, you know, the, the, the people at the factory have a great deal of like, oh, wow, this is everything that we do. That's, that's great. But the thing is, I review knives as functional everyday carry tools, and honestly, this doesn't feel like a functional everyday carry tool. Now, mind you, I am not just being biased here. I mean, there are functional everyday carry tools that are also traditional knives, like this GEC Wall Street. I love this knife, and you know what? It is a great knife, too, uh, for actually, you know, carrying and using. Or even this GEC 43 is another really great functional piece that also happens to be a very traditional style of knife. Or, or I've had knives from Northwoods, things like that. I mean, there are plenty of traditionals out there that are really nice knives and that are really good functional tools. But honestly, this feels much more like a beautiful knife-shaped object than a beautiful knife, and it's not really a functional tool. The idea, coming back around, the idea of a multi-blade knife, though, isn't entirely absurd. I don't want to sound like I'm downing on it for that reason. Um, and I think that there are some, especially for the two-blader approaches, there were definitely some arguments there. You can keep one of them very, very sharp, like make one that is just extremely sharp, like hair whittling sharp, and then keep the other one as a user. That way, if you just need something to cut open a box or something, you use the user. But if you really need something that's incredibly sharp for a fine detailed cut, you've still got one in reserve. That's a great idea. Or maybe one blade is serrated, one blade is plain. Because serrated and plain blades have some different skills. Though a sharp plane blade tends to do the trick. Um, you could use one of them for food, one of them for, you know, motor oil or whatnot. If you're using the same knife for food and motor oil, have fun. I mean, there are reasons to do multi-blade knives. I think five of them is probably a bit much, even if they were really well done. But it's not a completely crazy idea. But this guy, unfortunately, kind of is. This feels to me like a collector's curio, a gimmick, the company mostly just showing off. And ultimately, I'm left feeling like this knife is actually labeled very accurately on the side of it here. Because at the end of the day, you're going to want this particular knife to stay right inside the case. Because, yeah, you don't want it in your pocket. So there you go. I hope this has been interesting. I, I'm really, I'm disappointed here. But at some level, it taught me a lot. And it let me know that everything I've felt in the past, at least in my personal estimation of the, the company is about where it actually lands. Um, so anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, uh, that you enjoyed all of these blades all at once, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.